I, I have referred to you uh, publicly and privately as a Renaissance man. And now you have a novel out, The Overton Window. Yeah. It depicts people fighting for liberty against the government. It makes them heroes. Does it also depict conspiracy theorists as heroes? I don't know, as heroes. I guess at the end, one of the conspiracy theorists um, uh, realizes that he has, that there's a place for those people who are pushing the envelope at the beginning of a movement. And then um, he realizes, wow, if I, would have, if I would have pulled back, if I wouldn't have done, if I wouldn't have said those things, maybe we would have had a better shot. And he actually turns out to be um, a hero in the end. He turns out to be a hero in the end. Yeah. You can't tell us how it ends. No, no. Do the good guys no. win? Uh, you'll have to read. You'll have all to read. All right. It's uh, it's you know the great thing is is uh, one of the um, uh, one of the reviews I think it was was Huffington Post or Washington Post or I don't know one of them um, said that the villain is ridiculous. It, you can't. Nobody would ever say those things. A lot of it was taken exactly from Walter Lippmann and Woodrow Wilson. Wow. The words of uh, of the villain. Can you hang out for? Yeah, a few yeah, yeah, sure, sure. More with Glenn Beck when we come back. Find out. Is he really a libertarian? I'll ask him. Okay, Glenn Beck, we know from your TV and radio appearances and your new novel and all the conversations we've had, you don't like big government. Right. Are you a libertarian? Um, yeah, I, I think so. I, 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 say that, I say that with um, uh, respect to libertarians because I don't think they want me in, in, in their camp sometimes. You know I want I know. You know that. I, know. Um, I, I was a guy who didn't believe the things that I did uh, 10 years ago, started to really, about six years ago, really started to open my eyes towards the end of the first term of the Bush administration. Right. Turned hard. I bought into the, you know, hey, wave the flag and let's, you know, let's get them. Um, and didn't really, I think it was more the average person, didn't really understand what was going on. Started getting really bad feelings after the first, uh, year, the, um, the last year of the first Bush. Term. Well, you, you, you and I agree that our rights are inalienable, that yep. the government can't take them away yep. with a piece of legislation mm -hmm. or a presidential decree. Mm -hmm. So if we have the right to privacy, can, can the Congress authorize federal agents to write their own search warrants no. in violation of the Fourth no. Amendment? No. That's what the but Patriot I was willing, Act does. I know, but I was willing to. Here's, here's where I stood on the Patriot Act at first, which was, we got to do something. That's danger. Whenever you say that, we right. got to do something. Right. And that's what I said. Right. Got to do something. And the Congress did that, too. They didn't even read the Patriot yes. Act. Yes. Um, but we were all, but the, it was a foreign enemy, so it was easier to say, got to do something. Um, uh, my stance on the Patriot Act was at least it has a sunset. At least it has to, every six months, you got to come back. You got you to hear anybody who is being abused by it, et cetera, et cetera, and it has a sun, sun, sunset. Uh, I don't think it has a sunset anymore. No, it doesn't. It's yeah. now 16 years, the so-called sunset. Yeah. That's a problem. Yeah, it's a That's a problem. It's a and now we're, now we're taking, as they always do, and again, being a foolish person who didn't really even know what was going on in the world until September 11th, um, being somebody who didn't pay attention, they, they never let go of that power. They only build on it. And the things that they're building on, it was spooky back under Bush. It's terrifying now. Do you accept Jefferson's maxim that I always say at the beginning of every Freedom Watch that that government is best which yes. governs least? Why do you believe that? Um, because I have not seen the government do anything except cause problems, um, uh, with an exception of maybe defense, but I'd like to give it a whirl um, on uh, you know defense that, that wasn't solely run by the, uh, uh, the government. I think you, you have private individuals that could probably take care of things in Afghanistan better. You know, there's a, there's a weird phrase in the Constitution that lets the Congress issue, quote, letters of mark and reprisal. That basically means hire a private army yeah. to get this done. Yeah. And they can get it done faster, I, we easier, and far more efficiently. We wouldn't, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be in Afghanistan today if it, if it wasn't for that. I also think that the founders were exactly right. They knew that people, all people, go bad with power. And you've got to limit that, limit that. I frequently am confronted with the argument in which people say you have to balance safety and liberty. I have often argued that it's not a balance, it's a bias in favor of liberty. Mm -hmm. Your favorite founding father, 
Benjamin Franklin once said, those who would sacrifice uh, essential liberty in order to obtain temporary safety deserve neither liberty you're, nor safety. You agree with that? You're about to see, you, it, it, that is don't waste a good emergency. The opposite of that is don't waste a good emergency. And I think you're about to see that in ultimate play. It's happened before. It happened in World War I under Wilson, where we rounded up the Germans. We were lynching Germans. We lynched a German. Um, a mob did and was released under Woodrow Wilson, released. The, ju the jury was so biased by propaganda that they said they just did their patriotic duty. A guy was killed um, and executed um, because he said a prayer in German to a dying woman. In the state of New Jersey, a guy was prosecuted for playing Beethoven's music in public, prosecuted by the federal government, Woodrow Wilson's Justice yes. Department during World War yeah. I. It's, it's frightening. And that's what happens when you have an emergency and the government is too large. There's not been a small government that has rounded people up. You, we, we, we got so much reaction to uh, our premier at the last week's Tea Party Summit with Sarah Palin and yeah. Ron Paul. Are you more Sarah Palin or Ron Paul? That's a hard one. You see, here's, here, my problem with Ron Paul has been that libertarians don't win elections because, A, they don't explain it well enough, and they also don't take into account that you have to do it. It's taken us a hundred, over a hundred years to screw this up. You're talking about the messenger, not the message. You accept the message. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, you oh, want I'm a much more the that message. Uh, the message. I'm much more Ron Paul than Sarah Palin. The 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 way that message is delivered, or better yet, executed. It's taken us a hundred years to screw this thing up. You can't just say, "Hey, we're going to pull every all of our troops out from all around the world." I, it has to be done, think, but it has to be done I think carefully. Freedom Watch just made some news. Glenn Beck, quote, I'm much more Ron Paul than I am Sarah Palin. In message, I am. Do we have a one-party, two-party system in we this have country a one party or a one-party system? We have a one-party system. How did that system? come about? Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> you have, you have um, I think it was uh, Walter Lippmann um, who talked about, uh, no, I'm sorry, it was, um, uh, the quote came from, um, oh shoot, or wrote um, Tragedy and, uh, and Hope. Um, he talked about, we've got to develop the system where um, it, the people can throw the bums out, but still then choose the other party, and the other party will continue the policy. Is the government more interested in the liberty of the people or power for itself? Power for itself. Not even a close call. Not even close. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it, 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 Judge, I, I never, I'm about as patriotic as you can get. I, I love this country. I love this country's history. Um, but I've never felt this way about my country before. I, I have, it, it, you know, it started under George W. Bush with the out of control spending and the programs and the lies on the border. And it has just not let up. And I, I look at us now and I, I wonder if we, don't, if we don't restore our own history, if we don't restore our own knowledge in our own children, we're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. We've got to go back to the principles that we had over 100 years ago. Not, the back, not back to the principles that we had under the last administration, but the principles that we had over 100 years ago. Nicely put. Our thanks to Glenn Beck. So is the White House just attacking BP or is it really attacking capitalism and the free market? John Stossel is next.